It's very nice. Yeah. Kind of a round, sweet, quietly nuanced kind of aroma. Delicious. It has some naturals. The beans were dried in the fruit because I'm getting a little bit of a kind of a berryish sweetness that you get with a good natural, and I'm getting some of that in the nose. Could be wrong, but I don't think so. Even could be all naturals or have a blend with a lot of naturals in it. The celebrity here is a uh, not a conventional type of individual. I guess it's uh, <laughs> true, this, actually, yeah. This would be uh, somebody who wants something that's, uh, well, either this person is really hip to trends in coffee and knows that in recently, over the last few years, that natural coffees are, are trendy among insiders. Mm -hmm. Or if somebody just wants something different to represent a persona that attempts to, uh, to go an uh, unconventional path or whatever. <laughs> yeah, whenever I want to take the road less taken, I always walk out with a natural, that's for sure. <laughs> Of course, that sounds pretty conformist in another way, but that's all. <laughs> so uh, the natural in the nose, of course, the natural is a. It could be a blue. You could call it blueberry. That's a favorite word for this uh, note, but mm -hmm. it's definitely a berry, cherry, sweetness. Well, this is a. Full-on natural, all right. <clears throat> yeah, wow, I really like it. Coffee insiders now are, are uh, mimicking the wine people by criticizing cups like this as fruit bombs. Yeah. Well, it's a fruit uh, bomb. But, but yeah. uh, for a lot of people, they like the fruit bombs. Yeah, that criticism yeah. sells a lot of wine, and, and in this case, I think, uh, or in <laughs> coffee's case, I think coffee. Yeah. I think it's said as a put down among a lot of my friends, but then I always so find myself making a little mental note of the coffee. What wine or coffee was this? Because <laughs> it's the one I'm going to sneak off and buy. It's a nice natural it's balance. It has some mm -hmm. brightness. The roast is, uh, I think, for this coffee, right on. Mm -hmm. um, it brings out the character and uh, of the coffee and the sweetness without... Uh, sitting on it at all. Tasty way to be edgy. <laughs> I'm at a sort of a loss on the fruit, to tell you the truth. Yeah, it's I'm not a, sure what it is myself. What to call it, but it's definitely a fruit. And I'm not getting a lot of, a lot of times with the naturals, you get chocolate as well as fruit. Yeah. Kind of got a chocolate covered cherry sort of thing, mm -hmm. but I'm not getting that here. No this is a little, no. little drier, a little crisper. Mm -hmm. Basic flavor is the sweet, little bit of bitter, maybe uh, some umami, a little bit of savory is uh, quite nice. You think apple? Are you getting any apple? Yeah. Maybe apple that's cooked apple. Apple. I was going to say apple cider or something like that. It's it's a. That's certain. good. That's good. Apple yeah. cider. Yeah. Really Apple. Nice. That's excellent. Yeah. Really nice. Yes, wow. Kevin. Apple cider. Yeah. <laughs> with a, a big... little, <laughs> with a little chocolate in it. <laughs> yeah, a little chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a big apple cider guy. I. Oh yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, I've, I've driven down to past St. Louis to get for a little kid wrote a paper about their grandpa's apple orchard and the, the cider. It was, the, the description was so good. I talked to a friend of mine who had a cute little sports car and driving us past St. Louis to <laughs> find this orchard. <laughs> we bought some apple cider. Mm. But it's enough. definitely coffee. It's oh, not a yeah, no. the apple cider note is not the doesn't dominate the fundamental character of a of a, an attractive coffee. 
So. Oh, what? Uh, <laughs> is it time? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just enjoying the coffee. So. <laughs> okay. I, I had actually temporarily forgotten who it is, but now I know. This is Resurgent. This is a little different show in that I didn't talk about what the coffees were, but I did talk about some of the personalities involved. And I mentioned George Romero, and you said it has to be George A. Romero, and it is, that's right, that was, but this is, I believe, his son. This is George C. Romero, who's oh, also a filmmaker, apparently. And that's very, uh, by the way, I gotta tell you, the packaging itself I, is so cool. It has like notes that you would get on a final draft. You know, it's got notes like you would get on a script. Red. Anyone who's worked in media, you get these red line, dra you know, drafts that have all sorts of notes from a, a wild director. <laughs> well, it has uh, coffee stains on it too, right? Coffee stains. It's got. This is yeah. a, this is for the package itself. You know, even if it's lucky, I like the coffee because I have a feeling uh, I'll collect the packages. Yeah. <laughs> And I uh, even got the roast here. Look at the, how they did the roast here. Can you see that, Ken? Yes. Isn't that neat how they did that? They <laughs> just out of sight so of medium it's, dark. Uh, it's I a think it's right. medium, right? Yeah, I mean, they're saying it's a little lighter than medium. That could be. But well, well I me, think they're saying it's medium. Yeah. 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 And does it say anything about the beans? The Tanzania. Beans? Tanzania. Yeah, it's a it's from Kilimanjaro. It's a, it says it's an extremely small batch of craft coffee. Only 200 bags were available on the initial run. That coffee review we've had the Tanzania natural from that oh, oh. from that region, but it's a very unusual coffee, right? It's a pea berry and it's from Tanzania and it's a natural. George C. Romero really wanted to make an impression here in the coffee world with this coffee, I think. Uh, I don't know about anything about his films, but I wish him well, and I'm going to look for him. Yeah, me too. And it makes it, uh, there's a, let me give him a couple of bonus points here. I mean, for, I'm already there, I mean, as far as uh, being a fan, but let's see just from this. But look at this, he's got a, he's got a hand grinder <laughs> recommending medium course for a Chemex. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's George. You know, what do you do? That, my, my, do some rabbit testing using my DNA or something? I mean, this, <laughs> this is fabulous. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, let's, uh, you know, enough, enough. Uh, uh, Any more, and I got to ask for money. My wife will be negotiating. Well, they have well, what was, let's find the oh. oxygen on that. Oh, so uh, yeah. Let, let, sorry. Let's do that. And while they say, would, Jason. Do that, Bring the coffee. What's the oxygen on the... Uh, the Tanzania beaver? Yes. 15.5%. Uh, 1.6 one or 1.5? One 1.5.5. Five? One five okay. 15.5%. 15, 15, 15. 15. So it's a... Is, is there a roasted on date on there, the package? There was not any roasted on or best by date that I could find. Okay. Yeah, uh, nothing on mine. Okay. Well, it tasted fresh to me, but we should advise George that he should put roasted on dates because he's got a good product here, but it's yeah. a small batch. Where did you get this, uh, Kevin? I think I got it from Dead Sled Coffee. I thought it was a really interesting coffee. One. Dead Sled? Dead Sled, yeah, like one word, Dead Sled. S L E D. Yeah, D E A D. Dead S L E D. Okay, well, that goes along with uh, his father's films, right? The zombie films. Yeah, I believe that Dead Sled has some other coffees. I couldn't figure out. I actually spent some time there. When I walked away, I couldn't figure out whether the the all the coffees were associated with Romero or if they were if they were just their own separate thing. Because he's also. I, I believe he's a comic book author too, so he's got other stuff that he does than films. Uh, that's where I originally remember hearing about him, and of course I put it I put it together. Yeah, George Romero, I'm sure he's related, but it was, he is his son. 